The Syrian government is denying media claims about an unprecedented chemical weapons massacre outside Damascus. The Saudi-owned media network Al Arabiya, citing a Syrian rebel group, is reporting that hundreds of people have been killed in the unconfirmed attack. All of this just days after UN inspectors arrived in the war-torn country to probe earlier reports of chemical killings. And RT correspondent in the region, Paula Slier, is joining us now live. Uh, Paula, nice to see you. So what exactly are you hearing uh, from there? Well, media reports are citing the Syrian Revolutionary Command Council, which says that government forces loyal to the Syrian President Bashar Assad were flying over the area after the bombardment using chemical agents. Now, this attack happened in the rebel-held area of eastern Damascus, in a place called Eastern Ghouta. The area has witnessed heavy fighting between opposition fighters and the army. What we are hearing is reports that the Al-Nusra Front, which are fighters that are affiliated with al-Qaeda are also operating there. Now, some reports do suggest that more than a thousand people were killed in this latest attack, but other reports talk about dozens dying. Graphic images have flooded the internet, showing alleged victims choking, foaming at the mouth and displaying other possible symptoms of chemical attacks in Syria. The origin of this footage, however, is unverified, and that point needs to be made that no one knows where it was filmed or who filmed it. We are trying to get more details at this stage from the area. We have been speaking with local residents who confirmed that there was fighting there earlier, but they insist that there have been absolutely no signs of any kind of chemical attacks. The first to break this news was the Saudi Arabia network Al Arabiya. Now, Saudi Arabia has its own agenda inside Syria. It's anti the Syrian president Assad, and therefore any kind of reports of the use of chemical weaponry must must take this into consideration. Uh, Paula, and what's been reaction to the to this alleged uh, attack worldwide? There has been international reaction. The reports have been vehemently de denied by the Syrian government, while they have caused a huge storm elsewhere in the world. The UK is demanding an immediate action by the United Nations Security Council. The Arab League says that the incident should be investigated at once. And all of this comes at a time when UN inspectors are inside the country conducting a chemical probe. The situation with chemical attacks is far from clear. We need to make the point that the first reports of chemical weapons was that they were used in the field back in March the 19th this year by the Takfiri terrorist groups when they launched a rocket attack in Kal al Asal. Now, that did cause widespread destruction, and Syria immediately demanded an investigation from the United Nations. The Syrian government also has said that it is aware that sarin and projectile are being manufactured by the al Nusra in the suburbs of Damascus. And this has been confirmed by fighters who've been arrested by the Syrian army. The United Nations for its side has said that it has received up to 13 reports of chemical weapons used in Syria. The one from the Damascus government and the rest mainly from the United Kingdom, France and the United States. Both sides of the conflict, and here we're talking about the rebels and the government, have however denied using chemical weapons. The, in May, the United Nations independent investigator Carla Del Ponte said that there was strong su suspicions that the rebels had used this illegal sarin gas. The issue has become part of political manipulations in terms of what is happening inside Syria. The American president, Barack Obama, has declared that any kind of chemical attack would be a red line that could ultimately trigger American intervention inside Syria. But as I say, what actually happened today at the moment, far from clear. All right, Artis, Paula, it's clear. Thank you very much indeed for that update, Paula. Over the course of the civil war, there have been numerous rebel claims of chemical attacks and atrocities, and many of them have coincided with major political events. And here are just a few of the examples for you. In July 2012, as the UN discussed a possible intervention in Syria, the rebels announced a civilian massacre in Tremash, carried out by the government, that later proved to be false by a UN observer mission to the town. In August, just days before a UN Security Council meeting, the Daraya massacre occurred, 
once more Assad was blamed, but it was later found that the rebels were most likely the perpetrators. In December, as Russia, the US and the Yuan met to discuss a peace plan, the West accused Assad of arming chemical weapons for imminent use, but Arsenal was not used there. Later in December, as UN peace envoy Lakhtar Brahimi met with Assad in Damascus, the rebels alleged another civilian massacre after an airstrike on a bakery and after an initial media frenzy, it was later reported that those killed were likely opposition fighters. In April of this year, the rebels reputedly provided the US and Britain with proof that Assad had used chemical weapons and that was seized upon the West to funnel arms to the opposition, while a UN independent investigation found it was most likely the rebels behind the chemical attack. Given all of this, uh, there's uh, the view that there need to be a caution before taking the rebels at their word. And in light of past experiences, investigation is paramount before blaming one side or the other. But uh, William Engdahl, geopolitical analyst and author of Myths, Lies and Oil Wars, tells us the report is just more of the old. The Syrian government, the Assad government, has absolutely nothing to gain by using chemical weapons, and they know that. Uh, I think the key point here is, is the point that uh, Obama made this very unfortunate statement, pinning himself in, that if proof of chemical weapon use by, by the government uh, is demonstrated, that's the red line for U.S. military involvement, no-fly zone, the whole thing. And. Uh, this has become now the, the line in the sand issue between war and not war on the side of the U.S. and, and NATO in Syria. So uh, it's no surprise that the Saudis, who are uh, quite avid backers of, of, of a regime change, are, uh, are uh, floating this in their, in their news media to try to create the impression, I think, of, of uh, a gas attack by the Assad government. And UK-based geopolitical analyst Patrick Henningsen explained why he thinks it's too early to jump the gun and point the finger at the Syrian government. And of course, if we look at the history of this particular region, uh, the Ghouta region where the attack is said to take place is very active with the al-Nusra front. And they've also been implicated in using makeshift chlorine bombs in Aleppo back in March. So there's a track record there. The evidence, unfortunately, does not stack up with these present claims of the Syrian government uh, perpetrating these attacks. Uh, who benefits from a chemical attack in Syria? Well, the opposition benefits. It's quite obvious. The Syrian government does not benefit. So the opposition benefits because this will be the key to unlock the uh, um, airstrikes uh, and bombing campaign over Syria uh, a la Libya. This is a li they, the opposition would like a Libyan-style coalition with NATO in order to force the regime out of power in Damascus. So they clearly benefit from any reports of a chemical attack in Syria.